Welcome back guys, we're at part, part four of the mower build series. And in this video, we're gonna be taking these parts I made in the last episode and installing them on this mower. So first things first, this is how the mowers came stock. There's just a little tiny groove in here, a little channel. Um, that little white mark indicates my center line of my axle, eight and an eighth off of the front is the center line of the axle. That's important for US LMRA rules, which we're building this mower to because you're supposed to retain your stock axle center lines. Unaltered wheelbase is what the rule book says. So my front axle is inch and a half wide by two inch box steel. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut a groove inch and a half wide, or enough for my axle to slide up and down, and I'm gonna cut it very close to the top. So my uh, two inch axle is actually gonna be riding up in the frame pretty good. Uh, that'll give me better ground clearance for my steering, all that stuff, and uh, it's just gonna work out a little bit better for, for what I built for my front end. Okay, hopefully you can see this enough. I got my, my lines, everything marked out, and I got a couple center punched holes here. Uh, and what I'm gonna use those for is two things. One, so I don't have to get the angle grinder all the way up in the corner. Two, it'll uh, eliminate the risk of a stress fracture uh, up in that corner, which is much more likely if you just cut the whole thing out with an angle grinder. You can also see the edge of this has a radius on it as well, so it's gonna uh, made up perfect. Everything's gonna be good. So next up, I'm gonna get my drill going, then I'll get the angle grinder up in this. what we got. Uh, I didn't do too much recording when I was throwing the sparks. This camera's already got a bunch of metal in it. The speaker doesn't work at all. So that's that. I'm gonna do it on the other side. Came out pretty good. And um, I didn't go overly tight on this as far as my uh, inch and a half. I left myself a, a good, I mean, at least a good 16th. That's completely fine. Um, Cause this axle is gonna be bolted in place. Uh, so, you know, I definitely wanna have the thing be able to come out without hammering it out. That's how it is in my other mowers. Um, the things just got in there so tight. So I'm gonna make it where this thing actually comes apart the way it should. And with both sides cut out, both notches cut out, I've got my axle clamped in place. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing next is I'm gonna be cutting up, drilling holes for my brackets that I'm going to weld to the axle. I'm gonna utilize these holes in the front and then the back holes are gonna be a little too far back. I'm using an inch and a half angle iron, eighth inch thickness. So I'm gonna actually have to drill a new set of holes up front uh, and then I will use those holes. So next, you're gonna be seeing me cutting and drilling those. are made up I got really lucky and the math just happened to be perfect where the front and back ones are gonna be uh, interchangeable so I could just make four of the exact same ones for the front and back so as you can see these bolt holes line up pretty good and then I'm just gonna have to set up my rear one so take the axle out drill those up and as I'm doing this you know because I'm making three more or um, two more mowers and probably extra parts as well I'm kind of like doing some real amateur prints you know if you will at least so I got the measurements um, I can just get back into it when I'm making the other ones after I verify that everything works for this and then just pump them out. So get to drilling here. We're ready to weld now. All the pieces are bolted and let me give you a better, better look here. Everything's just kind of snugged up right now. Um, not bolted in there too, too tight. But uh, it's all square, perfectly square, in every single way uh, related to the rear axle. Um, so everything's just where it needs to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack the axle to these brackets here. And then what I'll probably do moving forward after I verify that everything's right and this front end's a go when I weld it up fully, is I will continue to use this chassis to uh, make all the axles on. That way all the axles are the same. And then I just need to uh, make sure I get the bolt holes exactly the same. Um, but that way, you know, I should be able to swap out 
any axle on any mower and not have any uh, any funky stuff where bolts aren't quite lining up or something like that. So going for the tack. with the front end tacked in place pretty much done it's time to move on to the steering uh, this front end is going to be a center steer design so I'm gonna have a central pivot point with a tie rod going to each spindle so where I'm at now is I need to set up my my center point what I'm gonna be using is this inch and a half tubing uh, 1 16th wall pretty thin maybe too thin but I'm gonna use it anyways because it's what I got already and that's gonna have a couple bearings uh, in either side of it and you'll see how that goes with a 5 8 uh, inner diameter. So what I got to do now is I've got to drill this out. Um, the hole is right and not quite in the middle, but a little bit off to one side. Anyways, there's nowhere for a pilot to go. So what I'm going to do is uh, try to use a hole saw. i got this wood block to get my hole saw in place. We'll see how that goes. That way I'll be able to weld a chunk of this on, keep moving along. And for anyone wondering at home, yes, I do know that this is definitely a toy drill for what I'm doing. We'll see how it goes. I'll tell you what, the drills are pretty good. Got right through, so now I'm just at the point where the lip is. I'll take this block off, cut that out with an angle grinder. But those little M12s, man, they're no joke. And I got my piece of tube cut. Uh, it's just some inch and a half OD, inch and three ace ID. So these bearings go right in there. I got some nice little flange bearings, uh, five ace bore bearings. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this thing is directly centered and tack it in place. And then I'll show you what I'm doing for my uh, steering pivot arm in the middle. You saw my little montage of me making this part here. Uh, nothing crazy, nothing too too intense here. But uh, what I did do is I have the center line between um, the, the shaft here and where my heim joint's gonna go as the, uh, the same as the center line between the kingpin and the front of the control arm. So that'll give me an equal, equal ratio between these two control arms here. Um, this one is a little bit longer uh, this is like three and three quarters, whereas that's three and a half inch center line. Uh, and then when I do my steering shaft back there, I'm going to have a shorter control arm. That'll give me the leverage that I need. Um, that's just what I've done in the past. So what I need to do now is notch out my frame so that my tie rod can go uh, between these two points. And then I'll be making my new aluminum tie rods. So that's going to be a little bit different this year than what I've done in the past. The frame is notched and I got the 7075. 5 8 OD round stock aluminum, ready to roll. What I'm gonna be doing is cutting these, uh, I think uh, eight and three quarters is the measurement I got for my tie rods. And then I'm gonna be drilling them um, each end with a 29 64th drill bit on the lathe to give myself a good uh, one inch depth of thread for these heim joints. I've got left hand and right hand, so I've got my left hand tap. Should be ready to roll. Um, not sure if I've tapped 70, 75 before, especially not that deep. So see how the battle goes. That's how I made my front 
first tie rod. Before I go ahead and make any more, I want to make sure everything's looking good, everything's measuring right, which it is. Uh, I got the center of my chassis right here, so I measured from there to the sidewall of the tire with uh, with my big square here, and everything's right on the money. It's 19 and 7 eighths, um, which would give me um, 39 and 3 quarter sidewall to sidewall overall width. Uh, maximum widest in US LMRA is 40 inches. You can still do some fine tuning of your uh, width and everything with these heim joints here. Of course, they're also for your camber. Uh, I'm gonna be using this, the thinner nylock jam nuts. These are um, way bigger, but I'll also be using washers, so, you know. But in any case, right now, my, my shanks are about halfway through those plates, so that's pretty much a, a, a basic measurement there. Uh, also, I got these, these pretty much shanked out into the uh, tie rods, the heim joints, which is fine, because think about it, if you somehow bend this, um, you're going to need to only make your tie rod longer. There's no situation um, where assuming your toe and everything's correct where you're going to need to make it shorter. So, and plus you want as much thread engagement to the, to the tie rod as possible. So they're pretty much almost shanked out. They got like a, a thread or two on e either side, um, but I'm going to roll with that. I'm going to keep that measurement. I'm going to keep that for, for the other sets. So I'm going to go ahead and make the, the other side, then I got to move to the steering. And working on the steering shaft now, I got the console somewhat put together. US LMRA rules state that the shaft must be coming through the same hole uh, on the same angle as stock. And I'm going to be welding uh, this same tube I used for my um, center pivot here. Same tube, inch and a half OD, um, 1 16th wall thickness. So I'm going to be welding that. Um, I needed this, I happen to have this metal kicking around somehow. I got a couple feet of it. And that's going to work perfect uh, as like a bushing and um you'll see as i go but it turns out this hole here is going to be center line for the steering shaft and then the hole up top you know you can't really see too much but i'm going through the same hole stock uh up top and what i'm going to do is i'm going to make some struts weld them in way back here up to the top similar to like a racing cart style i'm not going to use any of this um to support my steering shaft a little different than i've done in the past uh, i think this way it's going to be better more serviceable probably more rigid um, but more serviceable is definitely what I'm going for with this mower. It's coming together now. I got that bushing welded on here, just tacked on. So this is what we're going to be looking at. I'm trying to do this one hand. This is going to be welded in that hole. There's a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, it'll fill in no problem with the weld. And then I got a piece of 5A shaft up here that I'm going to have to use to get it nice and centered um, while, I, while I tack it in place. So I'll be doing that, then making the struts. I'm just going to blast it out. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time with this video, so you'll be seeing it when it's done. This is what we're dealing with. Nothing too crazy. I'm just showing you now while I have the uh, the uh, console parts off. I'm going to go ahead and put them back on, make sure everything fits perfect. And then I'll be making my steering shaft and my one other, uh, I guess you'll call it a tie rod, um, from the front to the back. And getting ready to weld my steering shaft. I got my control arm on the bottom. This is about a two inch spread here. Uh, center to center, these are about four. So you're looking at roughly a one to two ratio here. Um, I also left it a little bit long and what that's gonna do is actually act as a stop um, for my steering when I go lock. I forget if it's left or right, um, but you'll see it. And then I have a three quarter inch hole drilled through here for this 5A shaft. It's way big, but um, that gives me the perfect angle when I, when I max this out like that, that gives me the perfect angle to accommodate for the angle of the steering shaft and it will keep that control arm parallel with the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld this up like that. Figured I'd show you guys underneath just a different view, same stuff, tacked together still uh, before I make my, my rod, which I'm gonna make now, 19 and 3 quarter center to center. I'm gonna be making that, putting everything together, and this will officially be a roller at that point. And it is officially a rolling chassis. Still tacked together, so I don't wanna get too aggressive. Got my vice grip steering wheel. Let me show you what I have figured out with the front end geometry uh, as far as Ackerman is concerned. So as I was saying, and I believe the last video, I'm aiming for a parallel steering setup on this, meaning when I turn the wheel, my left front and my right front will turn in an equal amount. Um, and what I've actually done is depending on where the tie rods are, I gained a very slight amount of Ackerman. So if the left front tie rod is mounted on the top of this control arm, it will turn the left front slightly more because it's more of a straight line, whereas this one, um, this one right now dips down lower. So um, as long as I have this tie rod on top, I will have a very slight amount of Ackerman, but I would still basically consider this a parallel steering system. 
and I'm at what I'd consider to be a maximum ride height of about four and a half inches. Um, I've got extra shaft collars in here. There won't be so many shaft collars when I do my final weld. Um, this is all just to make sure everything looks good so I can do my final weld, which I am going to give it the stamp of approval. Everything has worked out pretty good. I've just taken a lot of measurement, a lot of time, haven't, haven't rushed in anything. So that being said, it's time for the complete weld and then do this whole entire process at least two more times. And that's going to do it for this video. I hope I'm not starting to explain things and I'm not seeing them through. Um, I'm just working the mowers a few hours here and there. Sometimes it's a couple days in between. So I hope I'm not starting something and then not seeing it through um, as far as explaining it to you guys um, where I was going with it. I think I might have done some of that with the front end geometry. But in any case, we're definitely going to be doing more videos. This is video four. And so far I've only uploaded the first two as of right now and uh, I've been really happy with how they've been doing so I definitely appreciate the support from everybody.